In this lesson, I'm going to give you a really fun way you can start practicing your blues scale down. Now, it's just the second half of the blues scale, but what I found is the, if you're going to practice scales, the blues scale, for instance, you know, it is great to practice with a metronome, but it's a whole lot more fun when you take the blues scale and you incorporate it in a musical piece and then you practice in the context of making music. And so that's why I love this little lick here is because it's a rhythm harmonica. We're self-reliant. We don't need a guitar player to sound good, right? We can just jam just us and the harmonica and, and we're good to go. And so I, I mentioned in some of my earlier videos, this was probably one of the most important breakthroughs for me as a, as a harmonica player. When I became self-reliant, I started playing a lot more. I started feeling a lot more confident. I started enjoying my playing. And when I was improvising blues like this, I had a lot less inhibition because I knew people didn't know exactly what I was doing. So as long as I played in time, I, you know, I could really go for it. Okay. So we're going to do a little lesson. First of all, let's do the rhythm harmonica. Now, if you saw some of my previous videos before, this was a downward arrow for the to say ta on holes one, two, draw at the same time. So the new thing we're adding here is to say ta on holes one, two, draw at the same time. So get your C harmonica. If you haven't yet rinsed your mouth, good idea to keep your mouth clean as you play harmonica and C harmonica. We're going to say ta on holes one, two, draw at the same time. We're going to say toe playing holes one, two, blow at the same time. And we're going to say toe playing holes one, two, blow at the same time. And we'll say ta playing holes one, two, draw at the same time. So you notice if there's a negative sign, it's draw. And if, you, if there's an absence of a negative sign, it means blow. Okay, so why do we say ta on the draw and toe on the blow? Well, I could give you a really, I could give you several lessons on this one topic, but the simple answer is when you get in the habit of saying the ah vowel on the draw, then you, then you get in the habit of playing in tune. A lot of people unknowingly slightly bend their two draw and their three draw. And that means you're basically playing slightly flat. And so, when you get in the habit of saying ah on the draw, it helps to keep the, those draw bend notes in tune. Slightly bent means slightly flat, means slightly out of tune, okay? Now why the O sound? Well, with the O sound, the O actually gives the harmonica a big, a big broad, you know, the harmonica is a mid-range instrument. It doesn't have a lot of bass tones. The O sound adds bass tones. So it gives you a nice bassy tone. And the more round and bassy the tone is, the more round the tone is, the more you can get that wah-wah sound. That was just on three blow. And that was all just hand technique, hand wah. You might have heard me mention this before. Hand wah is one of the 3.5 blues techniques I encourage you to master. Hand wah is super easy to learn. And you see how much quality? I mean, here's three blow without the hand wah. And here's hand, three blow with the hand wah using the O vowel. I promise you I'm not doing anything with my tongue other than I say the O and I get in that O shape and then I'm just keeping it there. And all that wah is coming from the hand wah, right? So I mentioned this before, a lot of my uh, students who had done my beginner lessons, Happy Harpin, knew how to do that, like when I checked them, but they weren't using them in their musical context. They weren't just naturally, it wasn't naturally coming out of them. So that's why with my breakthrough blues systems, I do it over and over and I work out with people until it becomes second nature, just using hand technique automatically. So you don't even think about it anymore. You just think of the sound you want to create and then the hands just, you know, go on autopilot. They do it automatically. Okay. So that's how we do the rhythm. Let's play it together real slow. Ta on holes one, two, draw at the same time. Toe on holes one, two, blow at the same time. One and two and three. Come in. One more time. And two and three. Come on in.
Okay, so we've done that before. I want to get get you into this this blue stuff now. So you notice with the t with, there's a rest beat right here. Okay, so when there's a rest beat like that, I call that rhythm template number one. When there's no rest note and you play five consecutive notes, one, two, three, four, five, this is rhythm template number two. Okay, so let's hear how it sounds first. So you hear that, all that? Okay, and I wasn't even able to use my hand technique because I was pointing for you. So something as simple as that. Now, what was I doing? Well, for one, remember the 0.5 of the blues techniques was to add dirt, right? So instead of hitting just four draw, I'm gonna hit four, five draw. The second technique is the hardest of the, of the techniques. The, by the way, the dirt, the add dirt is the 0.5. The, when you add the five draw, that's the 0.5. Now, the quick bend up is the hardest in some ways. And so you need to hit four or five draw bent and come unbent. So that's the second of, of the technique. It's really four techniques, but I call it 3.5 since the add dirt is so easy to do. Okay, so, so first, the point five, add dirt. Second, the quick bend up. So you hit four or five, draw bent, and go to unbent. Third, the e one of the easiest ones, the, the hand wah. As I'm coming unbent, I'm opening my hands. And the last one, it is not so hard if you just add hand vibrato. And, and so that works, and that's gonna add a ton to your sound. So if, if that's what you got, hand vibrato, use that. If you've got throat vibrato, which is just as hard as the quick bend up. The throat vibrato comes from the throat. We're not gonna do that, cover that now. But that'll add a ton to your playing. Look, I could just play only two draw with throat vibrato. Two draw quick bend up with the throat vibrato. Okay, so that we work on. I the re, For me, learning throat vibrato was actually pretty challenging. So in my course, Breakthrough Blues, at about one third of the way through the course, we warm up on throat vibrato with our quick, with our lung capacity expander exercises. So we start every lesson with one with a lung capacity expander exercise so you can get more sustain and more draw. Good for your lung health, good for your overall health too, especially if you're over the age of 50. And then we, we work on throat vibrato at the beginning of every lesson, almost everyone. Sometimes I was, I was lazy and I wanted to skip it, but almost everyone, because it just takes that kind of repetition to learn throat vibrato, okay? So now, so that's the lick. So it sounds like this. So I'm doing quick bends up on every one of those four draw. Okay. Now let's move to the second half of the blues scale. So the complete blues scale, it's, this is missing only two notes. The complete blues scale would start on six blow and then it would play, you'd play five draw, and then you'd hit four draw, but this is just add dirt. So this basically is four draw with the add dirt, and you'll see why we do that later. So it's four draw, four draw bent to half step, four blow, three draw bent to half step, two draw unbent. So all we did to this, we took out the six blow, and the five draw, right? And then this becomes this, the bottom half of the blue scale. And so like I said before, a great way you can practice your blue scale is to make it musical. So watch, listen how I make this musical, but I'm gonna do the rhythm harmonica and then I'm gonna play down the blue scale, watch. So one and two and three. faster.
Okay, so let's let's uh, unpack this a little bit for you. So first of all, a very cool moment in this is so I hit four five draw bent to four five draw unbent. So four five draw bent, closed hands. I quick bend up, and as I quick bend up, I open the hands. And so that's that first moment right there, okay? Now the very cool thing is, so when you go, for, you have all this dirt, and then notice it isolates down to four draw bent to half step without any dirt. And it sounds really cool. Listen, listen to the, the juxtaposition of all that add dirt and then a nice four draw bent, nice and clean, much. Okay. Okay, so let's do this slow. Now, if you haven't already learned all these techniques, um, it's going to be challenging to do this. This could be a lesson you could come back to again and practice. You know, to really get the sounding great, you want to get all 3.5 of your blues techniques. Now, if you can do the quick bend up, that means you can do four drop bent all the way down a half step. Because for a quick bend up, you have to start on four drop bent a half step. So you really need, if you can do your 3.5 blues techniques that I cover over, like I really help you with that on my breakthrough blues system, then you'll be able to easily play this entire section of this blues lick, okay? So let's try it. So it's, let's actually, why don't you just try that one moment for a second. Four, five, draw bent, four, five, draw unbent, opening the hands. And then see if you can bend down into four, draw single note. So it's, So that's a big move right there. <laughs> and repetition is great. So there's, there's, there's a couple ways to get really good at things. One is you just repeat that one moment over and over again. I call it the IRS system. The I stands for identify a moment. So you identify that if this is a challenging moment, you identify it. R means repeat and S means slow down. So I identify the challenging moment, I repeat it, and I repeat it very slowly like this. So IRS is one way you get good at things that you're not so good at. The second way I was able to get pretty good at things that I wasn't so good at is I take something that's challenging and I bring it into a musical context. So instead of playing, a, so instead of feeling like I'm playing a boring scale up and down, instead I, I take something like a scale, I incorporate it into a musical context, and then I have fun with it and make it musical. So that's what we'll do now. Okay. So let's just go over these notes very slowly, one at a time, and then we'll do the whole piece. Okay. So four, five, draw bent. By the way, that symbol here means quick bend up, that little dash. So you go four, five, draw bent to four, five, draw unbent. Quick bend up. If you can add your closed hand, open hand, great. Four, four, draw bent down a half step. Four, blow. Three, draw bent a half step. Two, draw unbent. Okay. And so that either, if you're getting that, that's awesome. That could, just that could require a lot of work, you know, and practice. Okay, so now let's do this. Ta, to, to, ta. And so we're going to go the rhythm harmonica to the lead harmonica down the scale, okay? And we'll repeat those two lines. honestly a little too fast so let's slow it down for you if you're having trouble with that I'm not surprised let's try it really super slow this time one and two and three
Now, once you learn those 3.5 blues techniques, the cool thing is not only you be able to play blues, but you could take a song, let's say like taps, let's say. <laughs> now, one of the things to bluesify a melody, you could play it in the key of C, starting on three blow. And play it really sweet and pretty and more traditional if you want to. Some people it's important to them with a song like this that they keep it traditional. Now, if you want to bluesify it, you can convert it to second position. So we play it now in the key of G and you'd start on one draw. And you hear how I'm doing the quick bend up, I'm doing the hand technique. Throat vibrato, or you could just do hand vibrato. So it's one draw, quick bend up, one draw, quick bend up, and then slide over to two draw with vibrato. And so one of the great things is once you learn the 3.5 blues techniques, you can apply it to playing all sorts of simple melodies and you can bluesify those melodies. And so that's why I also, uh, for the first 250 people who get my blues harmonica lessons, uh, they get Bluesify the Melody by John Gindick and Taps is covered in Bluesify the Melody in second position. I mentioned on my website that one of the best things you can do for yourself is you can take a simple melody and play it in first position and then you can convert it to second position and then add all the, the bluesy uh, techniques to it. And that's a really fun thing to do with your harmonica playing. Okay, I hope this lesson was helpful. We covered a lot of material. We covered the rhythm, we covered why we say ah on the draw to keep it in tune, why we say oh to keep this sound bassy. We covered this four draw and how you can make something really simple sound pretty cool by adding dirt. And then we covered the, the, the bottom end of the blues scale and how you could learn, instead of learning a scale in a, in a systematic boring way going up and down the scale, you can incorporate it in music and make this learning the scales musical. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. Come back soon, and uh, thanks a lot for uh, taking this time to do play harmonica with me. All right, I'll see you soon.